Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back again to yet another video tutorial from the AP3X Institute of Mathematics Education. My name is Akeen, your math instructor, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to solve a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula. And we're going to be walking you through a bunch of different examples as it relates to different things that may pop up, whether it be on your external exams or in your practice and how you can actually approach these types of questions depending on the scenario. I'm going to be walking through the basic steps of what the quadratic equation is and how you know when to use the formula. There are in fact three methods in which you can solve the quadratic equation. One is of course what we're going to be discussing in this video, the quadratic formula. Two, we're also going to be looking at, in part two, the factoring method. And then, of course, in a future tutorial, once we get to that level, I'm going to be showing you how to solve a quadratic equation by using the completing the square method. So do remember that my channel primarily focuses on assisting students with contents that are related to the Caribbean examination mathematics curriculum. But of course, if you're whether you're in college or you're doing that level of math, which is what we call Caribbean Secondary Examination Council uh, Mathematics Curriculum, or you're doing SEA or CCSLC, or you're doing City and Gills. Once it comes to the quadratic equation, this video will be of great help to you. So of course, if this is the first time here on my channel, do not forget to hit the subscribe button below, turn on your post notification bell, Leave some positive questions and comments down below and do not forget to hit the like button. It really does help the channel to grow. Also, do not forget to share this video out to your mathematics community and your other friends who may be in need of this particular tutorial. Be sure to also click the title of the video and check the description box below. You're going to find useful information and links to any video that may be mentioned in this particular video all right all right so let's jump right into today's lesson and get right into learning how to solve the quadratic equation here we go let's get it all right guys so solving a quadratic equation first thing that you guys are going to need to know is how to recognize a quadratic equation and of course on my channel the very first time that you guys would have actually heard about the quadratic equation or the quadratic expression that is, is would have been, of course, the very first video that I did on my channel where we learned how to factorize a quadratic expression. We're going to be extending this factoring method here into an equation, but this time we're going to be solving and finding the actual value of x that's causing this equation to be equal to zero. So, of course, if you're not very sure about what a quadratic equation is, then the general form of a quadratic equation is in fact ax squared plus bx plus c, and it must specifically be equal to zero. Now, I particularly like to say that the equation or the general form of the equation is ax squared plus or minus bx plus or minus c simply because the expression can be a plus plus, it can be a minus minus, it can be a plus minus, or it can be a minus plus equation. So I like to add that extra layer here for students that may think that the equation has to be a plus plus, but it can be any of the following combinations of signs. Now, of course, there are, as I mentioned in the introduction of the video, there are in fact three ways in which you can solve a quadratic equation. One, the quadratic formula, which we are discussing now, factoring method, which is gonna be in part two of this video, and completing the square, which is gonna be a future tutorial. But we're gonna be focusing primarily on this particular topic, this particular formula here, that is known as the quadratic formula. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be showing you how the formula was derived, we're just going to give you the formula and show you how it's applied. So if you notice that I have my quadratic equation form in color coded here, 
I have the A been in blue, the B here being in red, and the C here in orange. And of course, it has to be equal to zero. Now in this particular tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through situations where it is equal to zero. I'm going to be walking you through situations where it's not equal to zero and we have to mathematically make it equal to zero. As well as I'm going to show you an example where, of course, you are going to have to rearrange the equation so that it can look like the normal quadratic equation ax squared plus or minus bx plus or minus c. So the quadratic if the quadratic formula is as you see it here on screen minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times the product of a and c all divided by 2 times the value of a. So of course you'll recognize here that in blue we have the value of a here and a down here so that will be represented by whatever number appears before the x squared b is in red here so b is here and b is here so of course that's going to be any number that appears in front of the x and c the only constant here is going to be in this position here that's four times the value of a times the value of c it is also worth mentioning that a cannot be equal to zero because if a is zero then it's no longer a quadratic equation, it is now a linear equation. So A cannot be equal to zero at no given point. A has to be one or higher or minus one or lower. All right, very good. So we have our quadratic formula and we know what our quadratic equation looks like. Let's get into some examples then. So here you are given this equation to solve. Solve the equation below. 6x squared plus 11x minus 10 equals 0. So the very first thing that you guys would want to do the moment you meet up on an equation like this is in fact a is equal to 6, b is equal to 11, and c is equal to minus 10. That's the very first thing we want to do here. Notice that a is the number that appears before the x squared b is the number that appears before the x term and c is the constant here negative 10. now once we are successful in identifying our unique values a b and c we can therefore go ahead and write our formula that is in fact x equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2 times a. We're going to go to a basic substitution here. So then x is going to be equal to negative of what b is so that's negative b and b here is 11 so that's negative 11 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is of course 11 squared minus 4 multiplied by a which is 6 multiplied by c which is negative 10 and that will all be divided by 2 multiplied by the value of a, which is 6. We're going to then proceed then to work out what is under the radical. So that's x is equal to negative b, which is negative 11, plus or minus the square root of whatever everything works out to be under the radical. So 11 squared is 1. 21 and then of course this negative sign here will be affected by the negative sign at the end here so negative multiplied by negative is going to be a positive 4 multiplied by 6 is 24 and 24 multiplied by 10 
that's going to give us 240 and that's all going to be divided by 2 times 6 which is 12 we therefore then proceed to saying x is equal to minus 11 plus or minus the square root of 361 and all of that then will be divided by say here 12 we can then proceed now to go over this side here and we're going to therefore say that negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 361 is 19 so the square root of 361 is 19 and that will all be divided by 12. now at this stage here we are going to do a split we're going to separate the plus from the minus so we're going to therefore then go ahead here and say that one value of x is that x is going to be equal to negative 11 plus 19 over 2 or we're going to have that x then is equal to negative 11 minus 19 over 2 oh pardon me over 12 i do apologize for that guys okay so now we just need to go on our calculators now and then evaluate what we have here so i'm going to write my solution at the top here so for negative 19 not negative 11 pardon me plus 19 that's going to result to being x is equal to 8 over 12 which reduces then to 4 into 8 2 times 4 into 12 3 so one of our solutions for x is that x is equal to two thirds and of course the final solution here is that x then is equal to negative 11 minus 19 is negative 20 pardon me negative 30 making a couple of mistakes tonight guys so that's minus 30 divided by 12 which by cancellation or by re reducing the fraction here we get 6 into 30 5 times and 6 into 12 2 so the final solution or the other solution for x is that x can be equal to negative 5 over 2 all right and that is basically how you would solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula all right now this formula is very very useful in terms of when the expression is not factorable in part two we're going to be looking at how to solve very similar equation here where the actual where you can actually factorize the expression now this may apparently be a little bit longer in terms of getting the result but it's way more effective because it guarantees that you're going to be getting a result whether the equation or the expression pardon me is factorable or not now of course that's not the end of it there's going to be many more questions that are going to be testy so let's have a look here at number two it's more or less the same we're going to go through the whole process again of finding our values of a b and c now in this case here a works out to be minus five b here works out to be minus seven and c here works out to be three so once we now successfully have our values of a b and c we're therefore going to go ahead and say x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and that will all be divided by 2 times a now it's time for us to go ahead and do some substitution so here in this case x is equal to negative of the value of b 
Notice now B is a negative number, so it becomes a negative. Open bracket negative 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared, because that's B squared, minus 4 multiplied by A, in this case, which is negative 5, multiplied by C, which is 3. And all of that then will be divided by 2 times, say here, A, which is negative 5. Proceeding to the next line, x then is equal to negative multiplied by negative 7 gives us a positive 7 plus or minus the square root of squaring negative 7 gives you positive 49 and once again this minus sign here multiplies this minus sign here giving us a positive value here. 4 times 5 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60. And so all of that then will be divided by 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So we're on our way guys. Now we just need to jump on our calculators then and go ahead and find out what is 49 plus 60. So that's x is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of 109. And that's all going to be divided by negative 10. So once we go on our calculator then and we try to find the square root of 109, we want to leave this correct to at least two decimal places. So we end up with x being equal to 7 plus or minus 10.44 and that all will be divided by minus 10. Now it's time to do a split in the equation. So then we're going to end up here with x being equal to what both, well we're going to split the plus and the minus, so it's going to be x is equal to 7 plus 10.44 all divided by minus 10 or it's a case where x is going to be equal to 7 minus 10.44 all divided by negative 10 so therefore the solution for the top equation here is going to be 7 plus 10.44 Press the equal divided by negative 10. It's negative 10. And that gives me an answer of x being equal to negative 1.744. Three decimal places to two decimal places would be one point negative 1.74. Of course, at the bottom here we end up with 7 take away. 10.44 plus the equal divided by negative 10 and we get an answer here of x being equal to 0 0.344 here yeah. and those are our two solutions for this particular equation now what you're going to find guys that as you're practicing these types of questions, you will then recognize that all it takes to get this question incorrect is one wrong sign. If you do not write down the correct values of A, B, and C, you will find that if you don't pay close attention, for example, here where we had these two negatives to become a positive, if you make a mistake and write down the incorrect value for B or you forget the sign from the B, then you might find that at the end of the equation here, you will not get the correct answer. So whilst you may have the procedure correct, then you may not necessarily get the correct answer. So you've got to be focused and you've got to pay close attention to the values in their respective position. So these two first examples here kind of guided you 
to what this is all about. We're gonna go into a few more questions here where it is definitely quadratic, but you may have to do a little bit of a reshuffle. So if you look at example number three here, as, had, as we had mentioned in the introduction of this video, that a quadratic equation must be equal to zero. But here you're looking at a quadratic equation simply because there is a square term, there is a term without a square, and there's a constant. So that alone lets us know that we're dealing with a quadratic equation. The problem with this question is it is not equal to zero. So we're going to have to mathematically make this equal to zero simply by bringing the 8 over to the left side. So by doing that, then we end up with a brand new equation looking like 7x squared minus 4x positive 8 will be transposed to the left becomes minus 8 and therefore then nothing is left here on the right which is equal to 0. Now at all times your very your first objective when it comes to solving a quadratic equation is to ensure that it is always in the form ax squared plus or minus bx plus or minus c. Now once it is in that form then you can easily identify the fact that a is equal to 7, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to negative 8. Now once we can successfully do that, then you're going to find that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2 times a. Now let us take a pause here because so far you've always seen me writing x equal x equal x equal. Will it always be an x? Not necessarily. For the purpose of examination, I've seen where many times on the CXE exams, sometimes a quadratic equation comes in the form where they're not using necessarily say x. So if it's say for example, it was say 7p squared minus 4p equals 8, then, then you therefore go ahead and say, you would not necessarily say x equal, but you'd simply say, P equal. So this x that I'm using here is as a result of all my examples having a x variable to be solved for. But it can be anything as it relates to the exam. So if it was an a, it would be a equal. If it was r, it would be r equal. Whatever letter is assigned to your quadratic equation, that's the letter that the formula will be equated to all right but for the purpose of this video we're keeping it simple and keeping it traditional so now that we have successfully identified our a b and c we can therefore then go ahead and do our usual substitution so we're going to look at the fact that x here is equal to negative and pay close attention b is negative 4 so it becomes the negative of negative 4 and that's going to be plus or minus the root of b squared. So that's negative 4 squared minus 4 multiplied by a, which is 7, multiplied by c, which is negative 8. And that all will be divided by 2 multiplied by a, which is 7. Now let's take a pause and highlight some important information here. I find in my analysis of students that I have been teaching and students that I have taught, they are very much 
calculator beast. Remember that my videos are geared towards helping students that are currently doing external exams under the Caribbean Examination Council. So these videos may help many other students that may be in college, but the students that I have taught over the years tend to use a lot of calculator. And so particularly this section of the equation here, most times they forget that whenever you square any value, you're always gonna get a positive. So sometimes when you go on the calculator and you type negative four, and you press the square button, it gives you a value of negative 16. And so most times you are not realizing that what you type into the calculator is the value that it's going to give you. Now you have one of two choices. You can either remember that once you square a value, it's always going to be positive, or you can actually go ahead and insert the bracket and square the value, you will also get 16. It also tends, uh, it also begs to realize that under here, let us just proceed and go to that next level here. We're gonna have x equal two negatives become a positive, so that's positive four plus or minus the root of positive 16 Pay close attention to this sign. This is also a mistake that students make. They quickly bring down this sign here. And you have to pay close attention to if this sign affects the sign here or here. So sometimes there may be three negative signs. Sometimes there may be two. Sometimes there is only one. So in this case, we have a negative four that is multiplying the negative eight out here. We're going to get a positive result here. 4 times 7 is 28 and of course 28 multiplied by 8 pardon me 28 multiplied by 8 is equal to 224 so that's 224 and that all will be divided by say here 2 times 7 is 14 now, I must make mention as I go deeper and deeper into these questions, it is important for me to mention really key details that will help a student to actually realize if they're on the right track. Now, in this stage here, this section, after you do this calculation, there can never be a negative result under the root sign. So if for whatever reason you're doing some sort of calculation and when you're finished you end up with say for example like the mistake you would have made earlier if you forgot if you forget to take the negative here to multiply the negative here and you end up with a negative like that well of course if you try to take 20, 224 from 16 you're going to get negative 208 and so if you go ahead and try to find the square root of a negative number, you're going to find that the calculator gives you a math error. Because at this level in math, you cannot find the square root of a negative number. You actually can, but that's at a different level where we're going to be talking about complex and imaginary numbers. So at this stage here, this equation cannot be solved, or at least it can be solved but the solutions are going to be complex and imaginary. For CSEC purposes, you're not going to have this situation at all. So that means then that, of course, once you make, once you end up with a negative number under the root sign, it means that you need to go one step up and to check to see if you had miscalculated a sign or you left off a sign. Okay, beautiful. It's worth mentioning those two sections of the question. We can then proceed now after going through all of that analysis there. X is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 
16 plus 224 that's 240 and all of that then will be divided by say here 14 let's bring this all the way up here then so therefore now we're looking at x being equal to 4 plus or minus and let's hop onto our calculator and find the square root of 240 and you'll find that the answer is 15.49 so that's x is equal to 4 plus or minus 15.49 and that all will be divided by 14 so therefore then we are looking at doing a split so one of two things is either you're going to find that x is equal to 4 plus 15.49 all over 14 or you'll find that x is equal to 4 minus 15.49 all over 14 so with this said then our values we can hop onto our calculator and type in exactly what we have here so that's 4 plus 15.49 equal and then we press divide by 14 you're gonna find here that this answer here is 1.39 and at the bottom then 4 take away 15.49 equal and divide that by 14 you'll find that the answer for this section here is going to be negative 0 0.820 or 0 point, negative 0 0.82 All right now of course these numbers that we are calculating these values of x they mean something but it is in future tutorials that i'm going to tell you what these values mean and so most likely you're going to have to use a reference to this particular video all right so these values here i'm going to be i'm going to prematurely tell you what the names of these values are but we normally call them x intercepts or we call them the roots to the quadratic equation so these are the roots or these these are the numbers to which the quadratic graph is going to cross the x-axis right but that's a little bit deep that's more graphical for now our primary focus is on how to solve a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula all right now i'm going to go ahead here you can't see it at the moment but there was a question that i had written at the bottom here and this one now is where it gets a little bit tricky if you're not following so I wrote this question specifically because I find that many of my students have a huge challenge when it comes to this let me just rewrite it a bit clearer here minus 2 plus 9x squared equal negative 5x and you don't usually get this type of question for CSEC but as I said I'm trying to touch a wide variety of students here you're going to traditionally get the equation dead straightforward for CSEC maybe a little twist here or there but for this one here many students often get into the habit of thinking that the value of A is always at the front B is always in the middle and c is at the end that is true given that the equation is already in the form ax squared plus or minus bx plus or minus c so if it's in that form no problem pardon me i forgot e equal to zero here so if it is in that form indeed a is always at the front b is in the middle and c is at the end but you might be tested especially when you go and practice papers outside of what the teacher has taught in the class and outside of regular past paper questions you will find that you're challenged when it comes to this so for this particular one here we need to rearrange the equation so it looks a bit more familiar 
So notice I have the 9x square in the middle. If you were to ask, or sometimes if a student is not well aware of these little, what I would call a little bit of rearrangement trickery, a student might be tempted to say A is minus 2, B is 9, and C is minus 5. And there's many things wrong with what we have done here because number one, it is not in its general form. And number two, it is not equal to zero. Before we can proceed to even think about using the formula, we must, in fact, get the equation to mathematically be equal to zero. Now, the way how I teach the lessons here on my channel is based off my personal experience with students in the past and also in the present. I've seen where this topic, if you do not go through the finer details, if you do not go through a wide variety of examples, and this is what I find that many channels are missing, it is always of the assumption that many students should know that the rearrangement is needed. So I've decided that, hey, I'm gonna show all my students that if you even meet up on a situation like this, then a requirement is that you must rearrange the equation in its general form. Now, if you are smart enough and you, if you're at an advanced level, you can pretty much pick up what is A, B, and C by doing mental transposition. But I kind of like when my students just go ahead and kind of arrange this in order here. So I'm just going to shift the 9x squared to the front. And notice now that the 5x that is supposed to be in the middle, the negative 5x that is supposed to be in the middle, it is on the other side of the equation. And we can't have that. We have to have the 5x to be on the left. So we're going to transpose the negative 5x, just like what we did here with the 8. The 8 is on the right side. We need to transpose it to the left because nothing should be left on the right side of the equation because it must be equal to 0. So I'm going to transpose the negative 5x and it's going to become positive 5x. And already the minus 2 is already on the left. I'm just going to shift the position of the minus 2, put it at the end. And of course, since nothing is left on the right, it is automatically equal to 0. So I have a nice equation that is written in its general form with the square being at the front, the x term being in the middle and the constant at the end. So therefore then, we can safely say then that A is equal to 9, B is equal to 5, and of course C here is equal to minus 2. As we've been doing all evening on this video, we always rewrite our formula, x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac all divided by 2a. So once we're successful in writing down our formula, remember that for c sec, this formula is provided to you at the front of the formula sheet in your question booklet. So as I've encouraged my students, it is very good to have the formulas mentally, but it's also important as well to know more. It is more important to know when to use the formula as opposed to knowing what the formula is. Remember that most of my students are students who struggle in math. So I, my aim here is to make this video to make it easy for you guys to understand every and any situation you might encounter on your own and in the future. So here then we have all our values of A, B and C. Let's do some substitution here. X then is equal to negative. Let us check out the value of B. B is a positive 5, so it's negative. And you put the 5 here, okay? So this negative is as a result of the formula, and I just drop my 5 here, plus or minus the square root of, of course, here, 5 squared minus 4 times A is 9 times C is negative 2. 
so far we are yet to see an equation where the sine is negative but we're hoping that we're going to get that soon and very soon it's very important that i highlight the importance of paying attention to your signs this is all divided by 2 times e which is 9 it is so crucial as i said the only thing one of the one of the catalysts in causing students to get questions like this wrong not at the college level but at the csec level is that students do not pay much attention to signs so x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of of course when you square anything it's going to be positive so that's 25 and of course here is where i will safely see that majority of students that i've taught in years in the past have always just quickly rushed to write down that minus sign here but you have to pay close attention like what we've been doing to check to see if this minus sign will be affected by any other sign that may be out here and indeed it is negative multiplied by this far negative over here becomes positive 4 times 9 is 36 and 36 times 2 is 72 and that is all going to be divided by 2 times 9 is 18 so therefore then 2 times 9 is 18 so therefore then what are we looking at then also remember that under the bracket here under the radical pardon me you cannot have a negative outcome because that would mean that the equation does not have any real roots or it does not have an x-intercept or it simply means that the graph does not cross the y-axis pardon me does not cross the x-axis so when it comes to this equation you have to ensure that whatever the result of this here under the radical sign it's going to be a positive number or it's a number that you can actually find the actual square root of so x then is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of say here 72 plus 25 that is 97 and that's all divided by say here 18 once again, we're going to hop onto our calculator here. I'm going to hop onto our calculator, just transfer this result all the way out here. So we're going to have x equals negative 5 plus or minus and the square root of 98. Pardon me, guys. The square root of 98 is equal to 9.899. So I could just simply see 9.9. .9. Let's use one decimal place. All right, that is rounded up to the highest degree of accuracy. And that's all divided by, see here, 18. At this stage, like you've been seeing so far, is that x will either be equal to negative 5 plus 9.9 .9 divided by 18 or it's a case where x is going to be equal to minus 5 minus 9.9 .9 divided by 18 and so easily then we can hop onto our calculator and type our values in so that's negative 5 plus 9.9 .9 equal and press divide by 18. We end up with 0 0.272 recurring. So 0 0.272 and the 2 here is recurring. So it's a recurring decimal value. Alright, and that's the value of x here. That's equal to x. And for down here then, we end up, say here with negative 5 minus 9.99, that's equal, and divide this by 18. We end up with negative. So that means x then is equal to negative 0 0.83 
rounded off to two decimal place. 832 or 833. So it's actually 8327. So the 7 rounds up the 2 to 3. So it's 0 0.833. Alright, if it was to a degree of two decimal places, it would be 0 0.27. And for this, it would be negative 0 0.83. Alright. Now, as we move into the final question for this video here, of course, just a reminder that the quadratic equation is used to solve a, the quadratic formula is used to solve a quadratic equation that is that is factorable, but most likely it is used when the equation is most likely not factorable. All right. So let's move into our final example then. And this one, as I said, is a bit of a tasty one. So before I got into this one, I wanted to show you that sometimes the equation is not arranged in the order that you like it to be arranged in and you have to do that particular task here. So for example, in this final example for this video, you're going to find that this X here is on the right. It actually needs to be on the left beside the minus 3X. And also notice that there's a constant of negative 4 here. There's also a constant here of 1, so that also has to go on to the side beside the 4. We have to remove anything that is on the right so that the equation can be equal to 0. And instead of saying remove, we have to transpose anything that is on the right because the equation has to be equal to 0. So let's do some clean cleaning up here. We have x squared minus 3x. Of course, I carried over this x here, so it ends up with minus x. And of course, we have the minus 4. And joining the minus 4 is now minus 1. Remember that anything, anytime we transpose a term across the equal sign, the sign will change. Therefore, everything now is equal to 0. To simplify this equation, then we end up with x squared. Therefore, we end up minus 3x minus x is minus 4x and negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5 and therefore then that is equal to 0 now we have a much simpler equation let's proceed and quickly run through this we have a being equal to 1 bear in mind that there is no there is no visual value of what is in front of x squared so it is an assumption that the coefficient of x squared there is 1 b here is negative 4 And C here is negative 5. And of course, our formula is X is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2A. That's our formula. So therefore then, Let's go ahead and do our substitution as we've been doing all night. X is equal to negative. And then if you notice here that B is a negative number. So the negative sign that is here is not related to the sign that is up here. They are individual values. So this negative that I have right here in black is as a result of the negative that is in the formula. And B is a negative number, so it becomes negative of negative 4. Students make a lot of mistakes when it comes to this. And so at the end of the equation, this sign here, if not written properly, will affect your end result. Plus or minus here, the square root of B squared, that's negative 4 squared, minus 4 times A which is 1 times C, which is negative 5. And that is all divided by 2 times A, which is 1. Now that we are at this stage here, we must pay close attention. So far, the examples that I've written down, unfortunately, does not show where Sometimes what is under the root 
you may end up with a minus. All my examples always seem to turn out to be a positive, but sometimes you may not see a sign that is here. So occasionally, if you don't see a sign that is here, then the sign that is here comes down. But the moment you see a sign that is on either the final term here, either A or C, then you're going to find that the sign under the radical is going to change to a plus. So quickly here, we have x being equal to positive 4, since the negative multiplies the negative, plus or minus the square root of square negative 4, you get positive 16. And again, this negative multiplied by this negative gives us a positive. 4 times 1 is 4, times 5 is 20. And so therefore, all of this then is going to be divided by 2. Now we end up here with that x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 36 and all of that then will be divided by 2. x then is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root, well, the square root of 36 is 6, so you can stop here, and all of that will then be divided by 2. So we just need to do a split then. One of two things, well, both situations are going to be correct, is either that x is equal to 4 plus 6 over 2, or it so happens that x is equal to 4 take away 6 over 2. This is a nice question to end the video. So 4 plus 6 is 10, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. 4 take away 6 is negative 2, and of course negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Alright? And this brings us to the end of this particular video here about solving quadratic equation. I really do hope that if you've been having problems with quadratic equation, it has finally been resolved. And of course, if you have not yet done quadratic equation, or you have encountered questions where the quadratic equation doesn't look as normal, this video was able to clear up and give you some clarity on that. I'm going to be doing a part two to this video where sometimes you get a quadratic equation to solve, but you do not necessarily have to solve it by using the quadratic formula. You may need to use factorization. Although the quadratic formula is applicable, sometimes the formula can be a little bit lengthy depending on the equation. All right. So I do hope that you enjoyed this video and it was fulfilling and you got the knowledge that you indeed wanted and you got the clarity that you needed. With this said, do not forget to hit the subscribe button before you go if you have not done that as yet. Leave some positive questions and comments. Leave your thoughts down into the comment section below. Hit the like button because it really does help the channel to grow. It really does help the channel to go on the algorithm to help other CTEC students who are struggling. And do not forget to share this out to families, friends, upcoming students, being prepared for exam or currently are in preparation mode for exam. So until then, Take care, my name is Akin, your math instructor. Keep on practice and develop this mathematical discipline for the future. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.